Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm here to be discussing a few new patch notes uh, that just surfaced from El Shiko Eevee. These are just leaks. Um, they're not confirmed yet, but I do hope that they will indeed be confirmed because uh, these are some very big changes to the dynamics of a lot of Pokemon. So let's just jump right into it. Generally, as an overview, uh, the nerfs will be heavily nerfed on Dragapult and the um, buffs will be Scizor Scyther, Glaceon, Talonflame, Gengar, Greninja, Cinderace, Decidueye and Gyarados. And those that get both nerfs and buffs will be Mewtwo X and Y uh, as well as Snorlax. But Snorlax I'm pretty sure that they're all buffs as well so I think buff is just, buff includes Snorlax. Um, Mewtwo X Y is just um, both nerfs and buffs, so it's just a short announcement. So adjustment. So let's jump right in into the new changes. Firstly, we have Gyarados. Gyarados on the Aqua Tail will get a reduced cooldown from eight seconds to six point five seconds, and a move change. I feel this is uh, this is crazy for its Aqua Tail move set. It's definitely gonna create make Gyarados way more worth to evolve from Magikarp than before. So maybe it'll be more meta, I don't know, because previously uh, Gyarados is well known to be weak because it's easily exploited. Its early game is easily exploited by a good early game Pokemon from the opposing team. So um, yeah, <clears throat> Magikarp, if, it's, if they don't buff Magikarp, I think Gyarados will still be as weak as it was before. Uh, second, we have a Waterfall. Waterfall uh, increased damage and uh, bounce we get a move change so well pleasant surprises perhaps we get more Gyarados gameplay in rank. Uh, next would be Gengar we get uh, well an Omni buff we get Sludge Bomb decreased cooldown and range increase Sludge Bomb we might get more Hex Gengar in the future in that case Hex gets Reduce cooldown from 7.5 to 6. Let's say you miss a Hex, I think that would really help. Range increased as well, so Hex Gengar would, would I think would be a, a much wider, have much wider range to attack. Maybe that's gonna be way more helpful in future games. Uh, next we get Dream Eater. Dream Eater you get range increased. Well, that's cool. Um, increased range will definitely make Gengar way more um, annoying to deal with, way more dangerous. And the Unite move gets a reduced cooldown. Clefable, yes, a much needed nerf. Um, oops, I forgot to include this above. Uh, Clefable is also a nerf. Uh, you get Moonlight, which heals less, basically, but tick. So, yeah, that's, that's it to Clefable. Next for nerf would be Dragapult. Dragapult, Phantom Force, Increase cooldown from 12 to 13 seconds, uh, a decreased attack speed from 100% to 90%, and attack power from stacks are decreased from 10 to 8. Ah, so I see that they're really trying to nerf the Phantom Force moveset here and not give Phantom Force stacks as much value. So perhaps you will see less Dragapult. I still think because Phantom Force is built on the fact that you are KOing people and you get uh, that immediate uh, move back, we don't need to care about the cooldown. So if you combo it properly, and maybe you run it with a Blissey, perhaps Dragapult would not feel the nerfs at all. But next we get to the the, the huge ones, which are... Uh, okay, let's start with Cinderace. You get any attacks that increase 135 to 418. It's now 140 to 450. That is huge. Uh, for a buff and a nerf. For a buff, in that case, that's about 32 stat increase. That's huge. Uh, next, we get Pyroball. Pyroball level to learn reduced from 7 to 5. Now, this is big because now we get to see Raboots using uh, Pyroball, which is insane. The burn damage, is, I see, is also increased. Um, that, is, that is crazy. Uh, I definitely think Cinderace on a lane is now viable. Uh, if you play Cinderace jungle, it might be viable too. So I, I really don't know. I don't play a lot of Cinderace, but all I know is it usually is only activated at level 7 to 8. Uh, heck, even 9 or even you need to wait for the Parable or 
um, Blaze Kick Plus in order to activate Cinderace in the game. So, well, this buff is crazy and I, I hope it does bring a lot more dynamic to Cinderace's gameplay. Same for Blaze Kick, uh, also reduced from 7 to 5. But now they're making Flame Charge and Faint learnable at level 7. So basically, they become the Parable and Blaze Kick, and Parable Blaze Kick uh, become, um, you know, the level 5 moves. Uh, same uh, change in dynamic for Decidueye. Decidueye Razor Leaf cooldown from 10 to 9 seconds. I don't think this will really make a huge difference because Razor Leaf is not. Razor Leaf is just a buff. Um, this might not make a huge difference. Uh, level to learn reduced from 7 to 5. That is crazy. With Spirit Shackle, uh, I, I can't wait to see a Dartrix <laughs> shoot a purple, big purple arrow. I can't wait to see that. Uh, that definitely makes the Sejuai a lot more worth it in ranked. Uh, so you get a much more reliable sniper. Say somebody in your team can't play Intellion, the Sejuai would be a nice alternative because it's way easier to snipe with it. Uh, you get a Leaf Storm and Shadow Sneak, reduce cooldown for Shadow Sneak, increase range for Leaf Storm, which is nice, and you learn them at level 7. So, uh, wow, Decidueye, Cinderace, <coughs> one more later, huge buffs, huge buffs. Worth it to play. Next buff I want to talk about is Glaceon. Glaceon has always been S tier on its Icicle Spear build, but uh, I think it's also nice for them to buff the Icy Wind Freeze Dry because it's not really used a lot in competitive. And in ranked as well, a lot, of, a lot more people play Icicle Spears um, and Ice Shot. But Freeze Dry and Icy Wind decreasing the cooldown, definitely what we need. Uh, I would like to see a lot more Icy Wind gameplay. Talonflame? Okay, Talonflame, it's a pretty sick speed saw already. And we see its fly cooldown get decreased from 12 to 10. And then Brave Bird. Increased range. Unite devs, what are you doing? Dude, Talonflame is a beast now. Like, honestly, you increase that Brave Bird. I know it might not seem like much, but but you increase the Brave Bird range that that's you know how much Talon can poke? Talon can catch up a lot more, can poke a lot further into their formation and can steal objectives from a lot further away. That is amazing on Talonflame. I do hope I see a lot more Talonflame in competitive. Uh, we see Greninja. Okay, Greninja is also a huge buff like Decidueye and Cinderace uh, in saying that for Decidueye and Cinderace, uh, you get uh, a nice learn reduction. Here you get increased range from Greninja 6.5 to 7. A Water Shuriken also decreased cooldown and you learn Surf and Water Shuriken at a reduced level at 5. Frogadier using Water Shuriken and Surf, can't wait to see that. Increased damage on Surf actually. And uh, Double Team and Smoke Screen, basically Double Team and Smoke Screen uh, get a level swap with Water Shuriken and Surf, which is quite nice. I feel Greninja would be a lot more powerful at level 5, so you can sort of snowball from there once you get to level 7. And then Unite, Unite Move gets a decrease cooldown. Okay, so so far very positive um, changes in the nerfs, but next I want to talk about my um, Snorlax, the defender, usually not very good, but now, I mean, a lot of people play of course, Heavy Sam, Yawn, but now it's Flail and Block that gets a buff. Flail gets increased movement speed by 70% for 2 seconds, decreasing every 0.4 seconds. By 14%, that was the original. Now it just decreases every 0.4 by 8 seconds. Means the Snorlax will be running a lot more, a lot faster, for, uh, a lot faster at you for Flail. Uh, and then Block, you get a much greater shield. Yeah. Okay, next is my precious main, Scyther and Scizor. Got to be honest, I wanted a buff on them, but this is a bit little. <laughs> um, you buff Sword Stance, which is a move that I don't really use. But okay, perhaps Sword Stance cooldown 7 to 6. You're, you're gonna see a lot more Scizor attack weight uh, gameplay. So perhaps that that is taking a good step in the right direction uh, towards making Scizor, bringing Scizor back to the meta. I still think it will stay in uh, tier C. But uh, hopefully Scizor can get a nice rework so that it's as powerful as all around, such as Sarina and Aegis Slash. 
And next we get Mewtwo X and Mewtwo Y. Uh, of course now pressure, you get the Aeos Energy Charge, so it works like Zashin. And that's it for the patches, the nerfs and the buffs and everything. This, um, this update is crazy, honestly. Uh, a lot more dynamic to the gameplay for several attackers. And I think this buff, th there's nothing, nothing really, really eye-catching here in terms of uh, bad buffs or bad nerfs. Uh, but I do hope that we get to see more, for example, Hex Gengar gameplay, uh, Greninja gameplay that we don't really see in ranked and competitive. Of course, ranked we see them because a lot of people play those Pokemon, but they don't know how to play it, so now it's stronger at level 5. But that's it. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you guys also enjoyed the nerfs and buffs. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Goodbye.